Welcome back to the channel. It's Jake Howard. Welcome to part two of this double stop series. Let's get right into it. I wish there was a way to play other double stops and other keys. I guess we'll never know. The mandolin is beautifully symmetric, which makes our life a lot easier when we want to learn other double stops because we already learned the G double stop. We can learn essentially all of our other ones. It's going to be super easy and I'll show you why. Let's say we want to learn our one, four, and five. Uh, chord double stops. Let's and so let's say we're in the key of G. So we want to learn. We learned our G double stops. So we don't need to do that again. And if you do, go watch part one of this video of this series. Uh, it'll make a lot more sense. Uh, so our four chord in G is our C, and our five chord is our D. So instead of having you learn all twelve keys all at once, that's that's a lot of work. Uh, we're gonna do one, four, five. That's what a lot of songs are in. It makes life a little bit easier and we'll show how to kind of find other double stops and you can use that knowledge to find all of the double stops. So mandolins are tuned in fifths going down the string. So G, D, D, A, A, E. Those are all fifth intervals. So that's really cool and useful. So if we have our G double stop, if we move it down a pair of strings, so let's say we're on our D and A string, and we move it, move the G shapes that we just learned to the A and the E string, the same shapes, all of a sudden we have our D shapes. Let's go ahead and take our G third and fourth family intervals on the D and the A string. And let's go ahead and play those real quick. So it would look like this. Okay, and now what we wanna do is play the same shapes, but we're gonna move down a pair of strings. So instead of the G, instead of the D and the A, pairs, we're going to go to our A and E pairs. So they look like this. Same shapes. Perfect. And those are our D double stops in that family, uh, in the third and fourth family. So homework for you is to learn them with the other string pairings. Got it? Great. And remember this works for the family of fifth and sixth intervals as well. So if you know those G shapes, so let's go ahead and do that with the same string pairings we just did. So this is our fifth and sixth interval families. Okay. All right, perfect. So we take those same shapes and move them down a pair of strings again to an A and E string pairings. And let's play the same shapes. And these are all D double stops. A little homework for you. I want you to find where your D double stops are in both your families across the fretboard. And if you need help, you can head over to my Patreon page, which will have the sheet music for uh, the D double stops. If you need a little cheat sheet, we're still learning here. It's okay if you do. So that was our five chord. If only there was a way to learn our four chord really easy. If we take our G shapes, if we move the same shapes down a pair of strings, we have our fourths. We have our C double stops. So I'll give you one example and then I want you to go ahead and find the other ones. Okay, so we're going to start on our A and E string and we're going to play our G double stops. Let's say, let's do the fifth and sixth interval families. So start with our G chord, basically it's the same thing as our double stop. Beautiful. And these are our double stops that we're going to be playing on a string pairing below. Okay, so now take those same shapes and play it on the D and the A string pairings and see how that feels. It's gonna look like this. And boom, we have our C double stops right there. So I want you to take the same exercise we did in part one, which is put your metronome on. I had mine at 70 beats per minute and play this the four and five uh, chord double stops along with your one chord double stops. And if you keep practicing this, all of a sudden you have three double stop triad chords out of the way. You have G, C, and D. All you have is nine more math, math, math nerds. You got me. 12 keys minus the three we just learned. That's nine. Yeah. Yeah, I went, I went to school for that. So another good exercise for this is to do all of this on one string pairing. So play your G double stops on one string pairing all the way up and down. Switch to your C, do the same thing, and then switch to your D and do the same thing. And so do this with the metronome. I'll go ahead and showcase how to do it real quick so you can see it.
All right, everyone, I hope that was super helpful. I will see you for part three in just a little bit, and we'll go over some more stuff. We're gonna go over how all of this can apply to fretboard knowledge and knowing our notes and our arpeggios. So, super fun, we'll see you next time. And remember, Patreon, if you need help, it's there. It's got resources, okay? <laughs>